Good evening, and welcome again to Hun's History. I'm Hansel. I'll be guiding you through tonight, and joining me is a uh, longtime Hun, Dallin Stanford. How you doing, Dallin? Great stuff, my friend. Taking it one day at a time on lockdown and uh, getting a short back and sides haircut in between shifts. Looks good, man. Looks good. Thank you. It's hard to do that in the mirror, huh? <laughs> no, it's, it's, all, it's all the missus. Verity is, uh, is, again, she's got 100% satisfied customers, so it's working. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, Dallin, your, uh, your rugby history is, is very amazing. Uh, Eagle Sevens player, uh, obviously huge in the commentating world and podcasting and blog world with the Rugby Corner. Uh, what, what have you been up to? What's been going on in your world? Yes. So let's go pre-quarantine vibes. Um, I had the honor of going to the Rugby World Cup last year to Japan. And as a South African growing up in South Africa, the Springboks obviously the, is the team to watch. And one of, one of my players to watch when I was a young uh, uh, a rugby player was Joel Stransky for South Africa. And I got a chance to commentate the World Cup with him. So that was kind of unique and surreal. Uh, his famous 95 drop goal will always be in everybody's memories, right? That's so awesome. that was really amazing. And then um, more recently, I've done some seven World Series stops. So we had Los Angeles and Vancouver just before everything got shut down. And this year was going to be my first year to do the Hong Kong Sevens as a commentator. I got a chance to play there for a few years, which is amazing. I uh, went once as a fan, which was, which was absolute carnage. Uh, stories that Monty would be proud of. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, but we'll have to see how things go for now, you know. So it's just it's just commentating the neighbors, which is what's happening these days. Yeah, I see it's in your post. It's great, man. It's, you're having fun with it. That's good. Keep on smiling. Thank so, you. So uh, with with this type of experience, you know, it's it's rare we get a, a player of your caliber and person of your caliber and uh, and experience in the rugby world to come to the Huns. So, uh, what brought you to the Huns? And what what year did you first come? Was it? Well, yes. So, so uh, 2007 uh, oh, was the first right. first year uh, we, we came out to Austin, Texas. My wife, Verity, she got a full scholarship to uh, do her master's in fine arts at the UT. And so I'd never been to Texas in my whole life. I'd heard obviously wild stories about cowboys and gunslinging legends, uh, drinking moonshine, if you will. Uh, I don't know if that's Texas, but uh, it is now. And uh, so my first time, she actually went on a scouting visit with her mom to check it out and get all settled. But my first time there was on the plane moving. And so when we got there, I was really amazed, you know, first of all, at the, you know, affordable uh, living compared to we were in Santa Monica before that in California. So that was a real nice change. And then I couldn't believe how friendly everybody was. People were so nice and, and uh, welcoming. Um, and actually, coincidentally, through a rugby friend of mine, a good friend called James Walker, who actually coached a little bit at Belmont Shaw and Oxy, uh, the team I played for here in California, he had an IT business in Los Angeles, and he had one office in the rest of the USA, and it happened to be in Austin, Texas. Hmm. So when I got there, I had a consulting job working for him uh, for the three-year period because I was still playing sevens for uh, the USA. And so that kind of fell into place beautifully because, again, no other employer would be like, oh, hold on, you got to go and travel for three weeks now because you're playing some rugby game and when will we be back and uh you know no there'll be no job waiting for you but luckily he was uh, all, all happy to have me and so things kind of worked out brilliantly uh, when we when we arrived in texas so then to get to the answer of your story i went actually played some touch rugby at the austin blacks and had a great time there and there's some good people there but then i met um uh, wheezy and a few of the the legends including yourself and and shack uh, adam scheidler uh, he always goes up for a high five, but for us, it's just a regular five. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I really enjoyed the the uh, w the camaraderie of the Huns. Um, and that's not to say any negative about the Austin Blacks, but both both teams were like, hey, if you're going to be here, you're going to play rugby. And I was like, no, well, I'm going to focus on sevens, but I really enjoyed the, the um, you know, the vibe that the Huns brought. And so straight away, I went out to a practice with the Huns and, I, and the people at the Blacks straight away were like, hold on, hold on. You said you're not going to join any team. I said, I'm not. I'm just there. I'm going to if they need me to, to kick a ball around or coach, then I'll, I'm there to help out. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I remember this guy at touch rugby in August, giving me pointers in this totally positive manner. I'm like, who is this dude? So I was like, yo, that's like sevens Eagle sevens player down the table. Like, Oh, okay. <laughs> and I must say as a player, like you helping out and coaching uh, all those years, it's such a positive uh, area, you know, we had all types of personalities and coaches. We had some great coaches, you know, Ken and Ty and Kirk, and you just brought always brought that positive vibe. How was it for you as a as a coach, and what were some struggles you had? Yeah, so co coaching was coaching's interesting, isn't it? Because and, and you've done coaching as well. It's like you you kind of want to play if you can still run around, right? And so there's that 
that balance of instead of showing people too many times how to do things, it's trying to get them to, 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 to take part. Right. Um, and so I suppose the challenge coaching rugby in the USA, which I felt was that not everybody comes to practice and has the, the learned skills over, you know, years and years of playing the game as a youngster. So often we get to a practice at the Huns or anywhere and some people would be new and they'd be arriving and that's great. You want everybody to start the game. But as a coach, that's a challenge because you've got players that have, that have played for many years. You need to increase their skill base. But at the same time, you want to make sure somebody brand new enjoys the game as well. So the balance of you know, not, not uh, dumbing it down or not making it too complicated, that's always tricky. And you know, there are many times we had a good ratio of coaches to players, and that was great. But at times, the Huns brought out numbers, 70, 70 players that come to training. And while that's great and exciting, you know, back then we were playing at a middle, little middle school with no real lights and, you know, all of a sudden somebody kicks the ball over the house and you're like, okay, we've got one ball for 70 players. And so there were definitely some challenges. Um, but all in all, I'll say, you know, it was just a good spirit of people that were there. And so they kind of helped us kind of get through that. But I will say that's kind of why I love coaching sevens because there's generally less people. You can probably play touch rugby for like 60 minutes and you can play as well. You can step a few people like park cars. So you earn a bit of respect there as well. Uh, so it, it, it definitely, it definitely helps, you know? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Bringing up Burnett middle school practices made my knees hurt just now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like concrete up there. So, I mean, yeah, we bring up Burnett middle school where we used to practice and, you know, it was a, obviously a, a middle school field. Um, how's the club evolved since you first uh, came around? How, Cause you've been able to watch it up close and from afar. Yeah. So firstly, the training facilities, that's a big one. You just brought that up. Uh, moving to Nixon Lane, the the pitch there is amazing. Uh, the, the fact that there there stands, people can watch. There's a couple of fields now. Um, that really is very impressive. I know that when I first went out to the Austin Blacks, I was surprised that they had a clubhouse set up beautifully and they had three fields. So their setup was fantastic, and it's so nice to see the Austin Huns uh, have everything there set up beautifully. The other thing which has changed a lot is the alumni has now got quite strong, uh, and that's all thanks to Bill Overton. He's done brilliant work in that department. Good old Wild Bill. And then the big one, I suppose, is as on a on a playing level, being D1 national champions. I mean, that is is phenomenal. Um, I, I luckily, had the opportunity to commentate that game actually, and I remember seeing you afterwards, and we we celebrated way into the night and uh, special times, right? Because let's be fair, not only back in the day when when we were involved with the, the Huns, it was very tough to beat the Austin Blacks, just let alone make it out of side of Texas and then play everybody else in the country. So that was really special to see. Um, and, and proud, you know, as an alumni of, of, of the Huns, for sure. Yeah, definitely. That was, a, that was an amazing night. Um, I had such a great time when I showed up the next day for more playoff games. The staff remembered me. <laughs> That's a front <laughs> gate. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, good times. I, I think I got chased off the field a couple times. Um, you did, you did, exactly. You were pretty <laughs> lucid. You had a couple of good side steps as well. So I'd like to think my coaching came into effect there. <laughs> Day drinking, it'll get you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, we bring up the national championship. It was a great moment for the Huns. Uh, it was awesome to have you there commentating. Uh, favorite memory as a Hun, would that be it? Or do you have other ones? So, let me, let's first go favorite playing memory. So, there was a random small seven-a-side tournament in a place called Denton. And I know you know Denton, but not everybody in the world knows Denton. Uh, very remote. Put it this way. Uh, it, there's a military base nearby and there's not much else around and uh, we played in a seventh room there with the huns and we had a great time i mean the obviously the conditions were pretty poor uh but it was just great fun because i've been coaching at the huns for many many years and i hadn't been playing any tackle former tackle for rugby so it was great to actually put on the huns jersey play an actual game uh, you know throw the ball around with players and people that i've had drinks with and, and, and practice with so that was great fun got to see uh monty in, in, in his in his flying best um, he was sinned in a few times, got smashed in a few tackles. So that was great. He's, he's a Hans, Hans legend. I don't know if he's still out of the club, but either way. Um, but playing wise, uh, I did get a chance to play one, one 15 a side game. And that was against the Austin Blacks. And while we didn't win the game, I think half time we were trailing 10, eight or was very close. They came in their second half and they, and they did really well, the, the, the Blacks winning, but it was great. It was great to play in that rival fixture because I know how much it means to everybody. And, I, I'm for one big on on history and big on you know rivalry and stuff like that, and it was it was awesome to be involved, you know, because afterwards we all went out for drinks with both sides, and it was good, good to have a laugh and kind of kind of get that game under the belt, you know. Um, 
I suppose my favorite times would probably just actually be even nowadays going back to Austin and meeting up with the Huns and having drinks and, 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 and catching up and talking about those days and talking about what's happening currently, you know? So it's, it's kind of a, a, a community that, that is never ending and you kind of feel a sense of belonging. And, and to this day, I love Austin, Texas because it's a great city, but also it's because a lot of friends are there from the Huns. Definitely. And the, you, we love having you here. I, I know I love meeting up with you and t- doing some car bombs whenever you're in town. <laughs> <laughs> so, so whenever this is all over, please hurry back and we'll, we'll have a couple beers and share some good memories. Exactly. Well, well, it's lucky that Major Rugby has a side there. So I do get to pop out every now and again, or a couple of Eagles test matches. And uh, then we get to throw back a few cold ones, scared of nothing. Couple, couple Gil Gronies. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dallin, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, you can find Dallin on Facebook at the Rugby Corner. He's got some uh, great stuff out there and some new stuff coming out. So keep an eye on him. He's always, always all around the world. Thanks for joining us, Dallin. Thanks for sharing your memories. And, Thank uh, you, my friend Hansel. You got more steps in the Great Wall of China, buddy. <laughs> Cheers. Up the Huns. <laughs>